Hello and welcome. My name is Peter and this is the first of what I hope is going to be a series of uh, little talks on philosophy. And my intention is to give somewhat contrarian views, uh, with those which go against the mainstream. This first one is about analytic philosophy. How are we to characterise analytic philosophy? Analytic philosophy is modelled on logical or mathematical proof. It assumes that we have postulates that are accepted by all reasonable persons. It requires arguments to be made with absolute logical rigour. Analytic philosophy assumes a default position, typically physicalism. It hopes to refine this position, and that this refinement is sufficient for all philosophical purposes. In order to express the postulates and make the argument, analytic philosophy attempts to define uniquely and permanently the meaning of each word in the argument. Metaphysics is the study of the character of the contents of the world and how every fact about the world can be described in terms of such contents having such character. Physicalism is the metaphysical position that the character of every part of the world, every part of the furniture of the world, has um, contents as described by physics, such as particles, mass, charge, fields, flows of information, energy, and such like things. It's important to emphasize that physicalism is not identical to physics. It's a metaphysical position. And as such, it's not equivalent to science. We can make several overlapping objections to analytic philosophy. Analytic philosophy has a built-in bias towards the default metaphysical position, uh, namely physicalism. It tends to assume, rather in the manner of a statistical null hypothesis, that physicalism is true until a logically impeccable argument can be made against it. Analytic philosophy requires an inappropriate burden of proof. Scientists use the principle of induction, which generalizes evidence that is very limited, both in time and space, to discover laws that are valid throughout the cosmos. While induction has been spectacularly successful, it doesn't result in certainty. As is well known, scientific knowledge is provisional and subject to change in the light of further evidence. It's strange that philosophy, which attempts to discuss the character of the world in very general terms, should want to use more stringent methods than science. Analytic philosophy pretends we can acquire a considerable amount of indisputable knowledge, but almost all postulates can be questioned. Locke and Hume have shown that what can be known with certainty amounts to very little. There are several attitudes we might take to this. We might cling to these few crumbs. We might try to escape their conclusions, or note their conclusions, and go on to inquire what might be said with merely adamantine certainty. For example, that the sun will rise tomorrow, the first option stops philosophy in its tracks. There's no escape from these conclusions. But implicitly, this is what analytic philosophy claims to do. The third appears to be the only viable option. That's our critique of watertight arguments. Analytic philosophy presumes that gradual refinement of physicalism is always sufficient. 
But this ignores the possibility that physicalism is radically false. Well, I hope you enjoyed my critique of analytic philosophy. I do indeed believe that physicalism is false, and I'm going to show that, I hope, in future lectures. Analytic philosophy does have its place, but I don't think it should be the be-all and end-all of philosophy. It seems to me that every professional philosopher is, claims to be an analytic philosopher. And I don't think that that's particularly helpful. Here are some more talks I'm planning to make. I hope you'll enjoy them.